This is Twit. I can't even keep track now of what's actually new here versus what was announced, you know, just before the show or a month or so before the show. But um, on the dev- developer end, you know, GitHub Copilot obviously um, integrated into uh, or can be integrated through an extension right now through Visual Studio Code and also Visual Studio proper and all the advances there. But they announced at this show that they're open sourcing GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio Code. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. And what that means is um, the way Visual Studio Code to me is the way every application on Earth should be, especially something like a web browser where I feel like it should be this basic shell. And then you get like, maybe you get a little menu where you're like, I want this feature, I want and this. extensions. Yeah. yeah, through extensions, literally through extensions. The, the, there's a philosophical thing here too, right? That, yep. That, you know, VS Code is very roll your own, mm-hmm. where Visual Studio is comes with oh, everything. It is Battleship. It's yeah, the with, IDE, uh, yeah. right? Yep. It's integrated environment. But they're, so, yeah, and this this is, I think, going to be controversial. So what this means is that instead of you deciding that you want GitHub Copilot and adding that extension, mm-hmm. it will just be integrated into the source for Visual Studio right. Code, thus will be part of the product. Now, yeah. it's protectionist. Yep, because now I think it, it has to do with cursor and all these other yeah. things are going to, you know, because Visual Studio Code is an open ecosystem, uh, basically. You know, Gemini could come in with their own extension. Uh, OpenAI could come in with their own extension. Mm-hmm. And you can do the pair thing where you have like a side-by-side interface or whatever, but... Yeah, I don't know why this... I already open Cursor and Visual Studio Code. I know. Right? I already do that. That's right. Right? Like, why do you think I'm going to stop? Yep. Well, because maybe VS Code is now just part of it. <laughs> you know, I think this is the theory. Yeah. But, I mean, it's never stopped um, using Visual Studio Code, but the fact that there's an extension are built in doesn't going to stop me using other AI tools. No, that's right. Yeah, right. 100%. But, but, it, but you're right. This is absolutely why they're doing it. So there are a lot. Well, Cursor is an example. Cursor is built using Visual Studio Code. It's, it mm-hmm. is Visual Studio Code slightly modified, right? Yeah. So it's, um, it's Electron. Yeah, and you might see, uh, you know, there'll be Adam, some sorry. someone, yeah. yeah, some some person, some company, whatever, will make a version of code that will be GitHub Copilot less. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, this is going to happen. It could fork, right? Uh, it's yeah, open source. That's, that's, I'm I'm really surprised that there's not more forking going on in that sense. I mean, lots of things do get forked, but they're not like fork and actively developed and said it shown as an alternative. Yeah. But well, I'm this generation doesn't more fork as much. Going uh, as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, going on. Uh, the kids these days. Um, <laughs> so. A lot of forking going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, you forking kids. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how that progresses. But I, I saw that. And I was like, that's cool. Why? <laughs> you know, so why? We know why. I think we've come to why. I think we yeah. know why. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting. Again, <laughs> I'm surprised about the amount of insecurity in this space. Yeah. Right? That people, they're all afraid. They're trying to make advantages. It's such themselves. a big news. It's such big news when Microsoft embraces open source to any level. So mm-hmm. they do this visual code thing. It, it's an astonishing success story outside yeah. of the Microsoft ecosystem, yes. right? Linux users, open source users, everyone's like, oh, everybody yeah, loves visual. We want to hate code. this company, but this, we love this, this thing. This tool's great. And then they do something like this, and you're like, well, this is kind of why they hate you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, like, I, we'll see. But you're right. Yeah. I, it, it, Someone who feels strongly about using Gemini or OpenAI, whatever it is. Will, They're going to. They, they will keep using it. It's all free, right? yep. except for the tokens. But I think this is, yeah, no, and that's what's neat about it. I, I, I use GitHub Copilot pretty regularly. I've never run into a limit. I don't pay sure. for it. It's kind of amazing. Um, so we'll see. They're also bringing GitHub Copilot agent mode to, mode to other IDEs, yeah. third-party yeah. IDEs like JetBrains, Eclipse, uh, Xcode, the Apple thing. Um, that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of hitting it on both ends, right? So in the same sense that anyone could use whatever AI with their editor, well, they're going to say, well, you could use our AI with your editor, yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind but of thing. At right? the same time saying, no, our editor, our editor has ours built in no matter what. That's right. Right. So they, they, it's a little hypocritical. It They're is going out and putting on everybody else's editor, uh, but yeah. in your editor, no compiler. <laughs> it's built into the code. I, I just take exception to one part of that. It's not a little hypocritical. <laughs> it's it's just straight up hypocritical. But no, you're right. I, but it makes sense. Okay. Um, okay. The other, <laughs> yeah. So when you think about GitHub Copilot or any of these AIs, like like in the types of uses that they might have or that what you might use them for, I've used them in very basic ways. You know, look, pointed at a method and say, could you make this more efficient? Mm-hmm. Could you find bugs? Whatever it is. Why does my code suck? Right. <laughs> well, that that's a lengthy explanation. I've gotten very lengthy <laughs> explanations of that, by the way. Um, a little too, a little too, yeah. a little hurtful. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, AI at its heart, I think the best 
general, you know, at a very high level, it's like you can do it. You can use it for busy work that saves you time, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the neat things that uh, they're they're pivoting on right now is this kind of op- mo- app modernization thing, um, specifically for .NET and Java for now. Though I think it's going to just go to everything mm-hmm. where you have this code base. It is whatever it is. And it's like, okay, so you do a code assessment. We already do that. Um, do um, the code um, rewriting, you know, where you make it more efficient, find bugs, et cetera. Um, excellent. But now, okay, now upgrade it to, let's say, like the latest version of .NET. Or it, maybe it's a native Windows app, and you're like, I want it to have the Windows 11 UI or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this stuff is actually very hard or can be or time-consuming. And it's like, just set this thing up to go and do this in the background. It will come back later. Put it, give you a, a new, like a, a forked, to use that term again, repository mm-hmm. with all of its changes, documentation, explain exactly what it did. And then you get the, you can commit or agree to the commits as you go through it and say, yep, this one, yep, th- oh, no, not this one. And this is an excellent use of AI, right? In, in the sense that developing uh, developer tools, developer processes, et cetera, have emerged as the early winner for, for like AI use cases. This is, a little more specific like this is I, I really like the i really like this because mm-hmm. i i don't do a lot of software development but when i do it it's like this kind of thing and yeah. let me tell you it's a nightmare well and well, <laughs> yeah. and also that's what a lot of people are doing right, right? it is super you you don't work on the same code base every day you have to drop into a code base and oh make my god changes. and that's a and you're really hoping you're going to be done really that day like, exactly <laughs> Or God help you, it wasn't even code you wrote, right? It's, it's something almost that's been at the company. Written. And for, let's face it, if you did write that code, it was a month ago, yep, it's not like, code you wrote. You're like, I cannot believe it. Yeah. this. Yeah, I don't even know what's happening here. Yeah, you're like, yeah exactly. It's, so no code is code you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's a, right. Sadly, that's true. What do you mean? I, I Stack Overflow wrote it. What's the problem? The yeah, point yeah. is, <laughs> no, I don't. But um, anyway, I, I, that stuff to me is fantastic. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.